Hello, everyone, and welcome to our not so live but recorded uh, Wild Western Wellbeing Guest Slot today with my wonderful, wonderful friend. I'm so excited. We've got Jules Chabot, wildlife artist, with us today to tell us a little bit about her work and how she co creates that with the animals themselves. So I will hand you over to Jules and if Jules, you would like to just say a little bit about who is Jules Chabot? Oh my goodness, where do you start, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Robin, and I'm equally excited because um, we've been friends for a long time now, haven't we? And, um, and I always love our conversations and I uh, think we could talk and talk for hours and hours yeah. about our beautiful <laughs> passion for nature and the animals. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's 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 just really an extension of one of our chats, really, isn't it? I think today. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like um, I was saying to my husband David earlier. I said, you know, how on earth do you tell the story uh, of you know even the last ten years for me? Is I've done so many different things and so much has happened. Um, almost like it feels different, sort of almost like different lifetimes, you know, different segments of, of my life. Um, I feel, you know, it hasn't necessarily been the easiest of uh, 10 years in many ways, but it's been so incredibly amazing in many, many other ways that um, I said to him, how on earth am I going to sort of summarise it? And he said, oh, you'll be fine. Just, <laughs> just whatever you feel drawn to say. So... So I guess I'm sure there's probably quite a few of you that will watch this and have never never heard of me and never seen any of my work or, or know anything about the history. Um, so I, I guess to try and do it in a potted way, um, I left school in, um, at 16, because I left at 16, I uh, went into the corporate world because I thought I didn't have any other choice really and I didn't really know what I wanted to do I just knew I wanted to leave school and go and earn some money so that I could do do nice things and have nice things and and so I sort of got called in despite the fact that I'd always absolutely loved animals and nature um, I guess I just bought into the conditioning that said you know well you can't earn a decent living from anything connected to animals and wildlife and and the few people that do, you know, there's only a small number of them and you'd have to be exceptionally lucky or, you know, whatever. And I bought it. Um, and so I was quite, you know, I wasn't excited about working in the corporate world at all. And that got gradually worse and worse over the years. And although I moved from job to job and I did manage to um, secure more and more senior positions, which meant I had more funds to go off and I've done lots of travel uh, where I've encountered some amazing animals and wildlife as well which is amazing. Um, I never really got past the, the, the point that said what am I doing with my life you know am I doing something worthwhile that means something to me um, and I couldn't really get that from working with people um, and in the later stages of my my corporate life I was working with people around leadership and um, and the emotional intelligence side of things so it was psychology and neuro-linguistic programming and all of those different profiling things working with senior leaders in big businesses all around the world um, and I learned a great deal during that so whilst my heart wasn't really in it I was I was good at it and I was able to help people but I always felt like I was just helping a big business get bigger. Um, and it was sort of like, what does that mean? It doesn't actually, you know, my legacy is not going to be great, is it? Well, I helped some people make more money in their life so they could have bigger houses and bigger boats and what have you. And it just was not good. And I started to get um, unwell, I think, uh, because I was doing something that my heart wasn't in. And the training I'd done had opened my mind up to what I really wanted to be doing. And although I didn't have a label, I didn't know it was going to be here or there. I knew it had nature and animals in it. And my heart was getting really excited about that opportunity. Um, so it took quite a few years for me to get the courage 
to leave the employed corporate world and initially I set up my own training consultancy where I did the same sort of work but it was on my terms um, and at that point I could then start to reconnect in a more meaningful way with with the world of animals and nature which was which was awesome and I the first thing I did was um I was start to learn or remember more about animal communication um and I remember I went into a little bookshop had no intention of finding a book on animal communication but there was this purple book on the shelf and I kid you not it fell off the shelf onto the floor as I've heard lots of other people say these books just like almost fly at you and it was called Straight from the Horse's Mouth and it was Amelia Kincaid's book um, and I picked it up and I just looked at it and thought well I meant to buy that so I bought it um, and put it on the shelf and left it there for probably two years probably no maybe just under two years because I thought well, she's amazing isn't she but I can't really do that can I so finally I realized well maybe I could and I started reading it and lo and behold started doing the exercises it was like oh my goodness this is what I'd forgotten you know this is this is what I always knew in my heart was rejoicing my head was going what is that possible <laughs> and so I just sort of plunged in at that point and um Amelia came to the UK very shortly after I started reading the book so of course I just said right I'm going on a one of her courses and that was it really um it opened up this huge doorway for me um and I practiced and practiced and got you know better and better as you do with practice the more you do and the more you learn and the animals that I was connecting with were just teaching me all the way um, which, which for me is sort of one of the greatest joys is that the animals are exactly who they're meant to be. They know who they are. They don't get caught up like we humans do in all of this stuff that's part of who we are. That's, you know, it's not a mistake, but they, they give their teaching so unconditionally and without attachment and, and they do it in such a magical way when when you're able to listen and and, um, and take it in. So, of course, I was going down this amazing rabbit hole. of oh, I can become a better human being by working with the animals. And it was just so exciting. Um, and, I, and I was, you know, eager to decide how can I do that? How can I help? And and I realized that I needed to work with people to help them to open up to animal communication and you know communication from the whole of nature um, so I very uh, quickly decided that I was going to start teaching animal communication um, and because of my background in training that helped a lot I knew how to do it and how to put things together and and that's in fact how we met wasn't it with the uh, weekend workshop uh, down in near Guildford, near Guildford yeah uh, and so we connected straight away and uh, hit it off straight away, obviously. Um, and it became, you know, just an amazing place to meet people like yourself that um, that really understand that it's such a, a beautiful system of interconnectedness. Because if you love animals, um, you want to be with them and you want to be open to them and you feel better when you're with them. Um, but equally for me, it was about I want to help protect them and I want to make sure or try and help uh, as many other humans realise how precious nature and, and animals are and how much we we owe it to them to rebalance you know, the world and give them their rightful place on the planet, which isn't, you know, secondary beings or you know there for us they're not there for us they are incredible and they help us a lot but they're here for their own life path and um so that opened up those doorways um and and i continued to just meet people and, and do different things um and i started to um i think you mentioned in one of your uh, posts that i started to uh, receive messages from the collective consciousness of animals as well 
um, which can sound a bit strange if you've never heard of that before. Um, but it was basically um, the interconnected consciousness of a particular species would normally start showing up to me either with me seeing the animal uh, frequently where I was in the physical, or I would start seeing things in magazines or on social media and it would be the same animals they'd keep turning up. I think, well, that's a bit strange, isn't it? And then in the middle of the night, I would literally, nor, ne nearly always in the middle of the night, um, I'd wake up and I just have this message and I learned early on, grab a journal, write down the message, half asleep, literally, eyes blurry, just let him, the pen run and then go back to sleep and then wake up in the morning and think, wow, what happened? And, and have this message from, from these animals, all of one species, basically sharing what they wanted humanity to, to hear um, about, you know, the way things really are. Um, so I started to do that. Um, and I did that for a few years until I had enough. Uh, and then I started receiving messages saying I needed to create a book because I'd done a blog, got a website with all the with most of the channelings on. Um, and then I was told it needs to be physical, it needs to be physical. Um, so I created a book. I mean, looking back now, I think, how did I do that? I mean, it just sort of happened. I was like a whirlwind of a, a, a connection, I think. Um, and things opened up and the right people told, pointed me in the right direction. And I spoke to lovely people who said, oh, don't go there, go here and try that. And, and so I published the book back in 2012. That's the purpose of species. The purpose of species. Um, and that was connected to uh, Charles Darwin uh, the, on the origin of species. And I, early days, um, I kept uh, connecting in with his energy. And I was thinking, what's that all about? Uh, and one night I had, uh, again, a, a, like a message come through. But he was saying, basically, look, I wrote about, you know, um, uh, what these animals are and and how they came to be here from my and he did say in the message limited perspective back then um, and you need to write about who they are and why they're here um, and that was a really powerful part of it so I then thought well if he's saying on the origin of species the natural name would be the purpose of species you know who they are and why they're here and how we can learn um, and something Amelia talks about a lot, which I love, and she's so much better at describing this than I am, the quantum physics side of things. And, and she talked in her books and also in her classes about um, the holographic nature of the universe. Um, and I was always fascinated by this, and it really makes sense to me in that we're all interconnected. So we're all made of stars, as they say, we're all stardust. We're all made of the same basic elements, but then we split into unique individual pieces of that big soup, if you like, that big hologram. Um, and the animals and all of nature and everything is all a part of that hologram. And as holograms work, uh, each piece, each teeny little speck, you and me and each animal, each hare or each rabbit, uh, they each have the entirety of that holographic energy within them so so when you think about that and you realize that when you go about in your life you are attracted to certain things or certain things keep showing up for you it really clicked for me that there's a reason and if that part of the whole hologram is standing out to you it's because that part in you is calling for some attention and is calling for healing or rebalancing or expressing of itself in, in a fuller way. Um, and of course that, when I, sorry, Robin. Remembering, re yeah. re-acceptance and, and like you say, expression, letting it really come yeah. to the floor or be yeah. a part of you again. Whereas sometimes we maybe have shutting it been shutting it out or yeah pushing or it aside. saying no 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 I'm not like that or that's not me or I can't go there and yeah. and so you know and and so that sort of 
blew my mind as well and, and made me realize why you know why is it that certain people because I was always fascinated why do certain people love dogs so much and why do certain people love horses so much or a combination and why is it that I love these animals so much and what is that you know and I, I was always fascinated by that so I think that it started to make sense and then with the purpose of species it just added an extra piece into that jigsaw puzzle of well, of course, you know, the animals are coming forward to share the imbalance because they know we're all interconnected and they want and they always, as, as we all do, but humans suppress it most, we all want equilibrium because equilibrium feels great. You know, when you're in balance and everything's as it should be, in that balance things feel amazing so the animals in their state of presence and knowing who they are want anything any part of the big hologram out of balance to come back into balance and so that's why they call to us and they they want us to to remember they want us to feel that part that's hurting or repressed or uh rejected or whatever it is within us and that's i mean to me that's just a never-ending source of absolute amazing miracles and insight uh uh and and you know it drives pretty much everything i do really um and i always laugh when i meet people that don't get animals at all <laughs> And sort of look at me as if I'm some strange being from outer space. <laughs> but, but it's uh, amazing that when we tune into ourselves and when we allow ourselves to live by our wilder, wildish uh, nature, then mm. we know that too. Intuitively, we know what's out of balance or we're drawn to things that will bring greater balance, just as yeah. the animals. So they're showing up, they're sharing this message and... What you were describing, so like Rupert Sheldrake and talks of the epigenetic field, and there is that knowledge within the whole of the hologram, and we can tap yeah. into that, and we can just intuitively know this brings us back towards balance because it just feels good yeah. and feels right, and we may be drawn off balance by other things that maybe they like scratch an itch, but they don't feel right in the same way yeah. that drawing back to balance does, yeah. and unfortunately yeah. we can then get kind of addicted to the things that aren't serving us or or you know when yeah. the more we get out of balance the more we feel I think I need this I think I need, but we're, it's actually yeah. taking us further away yeah and I think um I think sometimes with that with the addiction it can be it just feels comfortable because even though it's not very nice in most cases it's just normal it becomes normal doesn't it so so we might want to avoid what we don't know and the things that might frighten us a bit you know, why is that showing up? Oh, is something scary and unpleasant going to happen? Um, so, so I guess it does take uh, the willingness to trust that this hologram is actually a friendly space. Um, it might not always feel like that, um, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. You might say, well, this place doesn't feel very friendly. Um, and that's true. The polarities that are playing out can be very, um, very extreme and very destructive. Um, and yet, when you connect to a power higher than yourself, whatever that is for you. Um, and, I, and obviously, I love that with the animals because they are so good at there's no judgment ever with animals. They don't look at you and go, oh, well, you should have done this earlier, shouldn't you? Or why are you still doing that? Which unfortunately, a lot of us humans still get caught into a lot of the time. Um, you can ask for help from that higher source and trust that it will be given to you. It might not be um as pleasant as you might want or it might not be as easy um but the the there is a benevolent force behind it and and i'm absolutely convinced of that from my own experiences over all these years that when you are genuinely saying help me i need to change i need help i don't know what to do forces in all shapes and sizes come to, to assist and and to me that's the biggest hope um for 
for the whole of humanity really is that you know as many of us as possible that can be willing to to tread that path and and face those scary things because we've all got them you know to varying degrees in different circumstances but we're all we're all carrying wounds and they may not even be our personal wounds they may be intergenerational um uh, and cultural and all sorts of different things but if we're willing to say well i'd like to I'd like to heal that and find balance for myself. We're actually helping the whole to rebalance as well. And, and to me, that's that's got to be the way forward, hasn't it? You know, you've got we've got to be able to feel like we're doing something to help the ourselves, but also the bigger whole. Absolutely. Um, and we were we were talking earlier about some of the fears that maybe fears around death. And there are fears that we push away, we resist. We won't. Yeah. We don't want to look at them. They make us feel uncomfortable, and this has been passed down through yeah. generations. You know, the belief that death is something to be feared, or whatever it might be. Yeah. But there's also a very strong truth in that you mentioned destruction as well. Destruction can be good because it can get rid of the old that is no longer serving and make yeah. room for the new. So you think of a forest where a tree falls down, new trees can grow. It's just the part of the cycle. And as you know, my cat was called Callie, which was, um, she's named after the goddess of destruction. I didn't realize that initially, but it suited mm -hmm. her well. But she came to clear the way, to show me so much of stuff that I didn't want to look at. And yeah. ultimately that was partly the whole end of life process. Yeah. And that was incredible. It was very, very beautiful, but bittersweet. But at the yeah. same time, there is so much that we learn from that, that although it's difficult going through it, it's a huge challenge, whatever the thing that we don't want to face might be, at the yeah. end of it, what we get from that, and yeah. you know, we look back and we think that was a blip. If we can just be fully open and allow it to process, so we were talking earlier as well about sitting with those feelings allowing them the emotions to process not yeah. resisting them not trying to push them away or pushing down but going through that then yeah. it gives us so many things ultimately that are a great benefit for us yeah yeah and i think that's you know that's the whole thing about life isn't it we can we can choose to stay closed off in our in our what we've decided is normal even if it hurts and it's not nice um uh and and a lot of people do um and they live with those restrictions or as you say when we open ourselves to facing things that we maybe well, maybe didn't have we don't think we had a choice because it turns up and it's in our experience and then we deal with it but we also keep asking you know how is this how is this helping me evolve and grow and we're open to that and again as I say we ask for support we can then start to see the bigger teachings and the bigger um, freedoms that come from that and then we grow and, and once you once you expand a bit you won't contract again whereas I think if you sit and you're so frightened and you don't want to expand I think actually as time goes on it feels like you're contracting and contracting on yourself um, which to me I've been through lots and lots of quite challenging and uh, uh, life death life sort of situations um, I would far rather go through that than sit and be where I was 10, 15, 20 years ago, because I feel so much more alive and so much more able to experience the good as well as the challenging times as well. And, and you know, and I think the animals have had such a massive part to play in that and, and all of nature. And, um, and it's a constant never ending cycle we never get there you know where's there what's what's finished i don't think we're ever finished do we so well, i hope uh, i love learning and learning more and growing more but i think that's a good point at which to mention the beautiful hair that you have behind you oh, so yes. if you would tell us a little bit about your art and how yeah. what is co-creation in your art yeah sure well i mean um uh so Moving on from where I where I left off, where I'd finished my book, I 
I did a few other amazing things. Um, yes, it's probably for another day. Lots of other things. Co-organised an amazing conference about animals mm. and awakening. Um, and then I went and worked uh, with an amazing woman called Linda Tucker, mm. uh, who is a South African uh, incredible woman, conservationist, author, um, and uh, she's actually uh, the keep the keeper of the white lions, the sacred white lions in South Africa. Um, and I worked alongside Linda for about five years, which was incredible. And I was lucky enough to go out to South Africa for uh, five years, um, at, at in, intermittent time, um, and just had a whole education in itself around uh, the white lions, who they are, and how they represent leadership on the planet, and and that was incredible. Um, and as a result of that, I uh, managed to work too much. <laughs> And basically got to a point where I thought, if I don't stop now, I'm going to fall over um, because I'd really burnt myself out. Um, and I've always had a tendency to work too much. And I've had that stop and rest. What's rest? How do we rest? How do we look after ourselves? And I've had to I've really had to learn that over the last couple of years. And so after I stood down from that role, um, I took a, about a year and a half, almost two years to recover from my excessive, uh, too much action and not enough rest and self-care and really learned a lot about that. And that's where um, my reconnection into my love of art, because I always loved doing art. When I was a little girl, I used to draw a lot and it was always animals. I mean, always animals. Um, and and part of my healing was this call I was getting to reconnect to my to my creativity in a deeper way. Um, and it was a natural progression that I was healing at home. And I'd still got art materials around in the house. And I just one day thought, oh, I'm going to draw an animal. And that was it, really. It was like, oh, this is so much fun. I'm having such a good time. And of course, because of everything that I'd learned along the way, with animal connection and communication, um, I'd actually started drawing and painting them. And what it wasn't a conscious thing. I suddenly realized I'm actually communicating with them as I'm drawing and painting them. And I don't know, I probably did that when I was a little girl, but I probably have forgotten that and hadn't really recognized it. Um, so it's almost like an extended period of animal communication. Um, because similar to the book, what happens is animals will start turning up in my life, whether it's a picture or uh, you know, a hair outside the window that just going around in circles, looking up at me saying, take my photograph, take my photograph. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, me responding to that and thinking, well, they've turned up four times in the last two days and it's been very unusual behavior. Maybe they're saying, would you connect? So, so I've learned to, to obviously pay close attention to that and love that. And then when I get my materials out, um, I just connect, connect in with them on an energetic um, wavelength and just allow them. It's, it's quite difficult to put into words what happens because it's a very visceral sort of Feel. kinesthetic thing. And it's almost like a little bit like the writing would just come through me. It's a little bit like that. So I'll be connecting with the animals and it's a, it's a feel. It's who they are, not necessarily words. It's a feel of who they are and how they show up in the world. And then my hand just starts, first of all, I draw the sketch them out and then I'll either use pencils or uh, in, in the, ooh, not the wrong way, isn't it? <laughs> Can't do it there, there. Oh no, that way. <laughs> See, no chance. Um, the hair just then sort of emerges out onto the page, and and this particular one I've used um, acrylics, and then um, soft pastels as well, um, and they just emerge, and it it always starts from their eye. Uh, I love working on their eyes, and I really get that connection most powerfully when I'm looking into their eyes 
um, and then and then I just come down. So I always start at the top and work down with the animal. Um, and it's like it's like being in a in an animal centered meditation. Uh, and sometimes I'm totally out of not totally out of body, but I lose sense of a physicality because I'm so in the art and I'm just enjoying that connection. So it, it does feel like a bit of a merge, a little bit of a merge. I'm still me, but a lot of what's coming through, I feel like it's a, like a guide, a guidance, which is just amazing. Um, and I, I treat it. I think it's very sacred and I treat it as very sacred. Um, my little art studio that I'm in now, um, I have a, a healing altar um, and I, I always burn uh, sage or uh, Palo Santo and I will light candles and it'll be a sacred thing before I start doing my art because I think I'm so lucky to be able to do this um, and, and I want to show the utmost respect for the ancestors a part of this without question and the animals who I think are our ancestors and show us so much and they bring that ancient wisdom forward um, and, I, and I really want to pay respect to that and I think um, I think it's really important and, and another part of it is that I feel it's important that when I create the art, it's about the animals and I want to give back to the animals as well. Um, and I get quite annoyed when I see big corporates using pictures of animals to build their own brands and they're not actually doing anything to help those animals. And in fact, they're probably doing damage in some way to those animals. Uh, and I just feel that's not right, you know? So, so I just, I want to give back. So, so I always donate a uh, percentage of whatever I sell my pieces for to a relevant animal wildlife charity because I think that's just you know respect and and then I feel as if I'm able to contribute a bit more as well to helping um so yeah this the hair um came forward because I had several hair sightings uh, which was lovely I'm lucky enough to live like you do Robin as you know I live quite rurally in um, in the west of Derbyshire out, out in the Dales um, and the view out of our cottage is all um, beautiful hills and fields and hedgerows and trees and uh, glorious and so we're lucky enough to spot quite a lot of nature not as much as I would like um, but whenever we do, um, as you know, Robin, we get super excited and oh, there's, there's a there's, oh, there's a rabbit. We get little rabbits. We get a family of rabbits come in the garden regularly. We get pheasants and partridges and all sorts, uh, lots of different birds. Um, and yeah, so I saw the hare a few times from inside the cottage, obviously in the in the back uh, fields, and then I'd be out walking um, and saw saw this particular hair a few times um, and got the distinct feeling that they wanted to be, uh, they wanted to be acknowledged and created and co-created. And they also wanted me to, uh, in this particular uh, piece, they also wanted me to share who their spirit guide was, um, which was a really lovely uh, request. And so I I just sat with them and, and asked them to show me who their spirit guide was. And, and I saw the blue tit, uh, who's just sitting uh, to the right. And then after that, I was just seeing blue tits everywhere. They were flying over my head when I was going out for a walk. And it's like, all right, all right, I've got it. It's a blue tit. So, um, so the blue tit was added in. And then of course the hair symbology and connection is very much connected into the moon and the lunar energy, which is all the sacred feminine and all of that side. So I got a real sense from the hair that that um, that he wanted the moon to be included. And of course, the hair, the hair on the moon, which uh, has always uh, been a source of great fascination for me, that there would be a hair on the moon. Um, so, yeah, so that's uh, that's how that piece came about. And uh, it was quite early on when I started, restarted painting that I did this piece um, and I love it. I can't get rid of it. <laughs> just have to hold on to it. <laughs> so maybe I'll sell it one day, but um, at the moment it's, it's staying with me. 
Um, and I was quite amazed that I was just ready to go onto a big canvas and, and just go for it. And as I say, it just felt very, uh, very much that I was guided by the hair um, and that that was such a special thing. Um, uh, and I, you know, again, I just feel so lucky to be able to do that. So, um, so I'm just continuing on this journey, uh, waiting for the next animals to show, and then, uh, and then doing sketches and starting to create them. So it's it's yeah. amazing. And you mentioned giving back, and you mentioned the eyes, which made me think of your owl piece. Oh yes! Oh my goodness, Zeus! I don't, yeah. Shall I see if I can grab him? He's actually. Oh, I'd love it if he's nearby. Not the original. Uh, in my little portfolio, I can do this without banging and clattering too much. Hold on. Yes, yeah, so I um can't remember how this came about, Robin. But um, as these things tend to happen, I think it was on. It must have been a social media post. I saw this picture of this owl and I just immediately fell totally in love with him. Um, he's on Instagram, I believe, isn't he? He's think, got his own Since Instagram. you've done the picture, that made me look for him and I followed him. Yeah. Well, he's an ambassador owl um, and he's in California. Basically, he's a little Western screech owl and... Um, he was discovered when he was very young and they think he'd hit a window like a patio window or something and he was on the floor and they thought he was injured but he was okay and they they um took him to the vets and had him checked over and he was fine he wasn't hurt but then they realized noticed that his eyes uh, had been affected and they realized that he was uh, almost totally blind i think he's got a little bit of light sensitivity um, but the eyes have been affected in such a uh, magnificent way. Um, and so they um, are not quite sure of the story, but whoever found him then got him to this centre in California called the, um, uh, the Wildlife Learning Centre. I think that's what it's called. Yes, I think it's the Wildlife Learning Centre in California. Um, and they have animals that they've uh, basically rescued. They've either been kept by people and then they haven't been able to, to care for them and they've they can't go back to the wild in their natural environment and they they provide a sanctuary um, but they do provide educational um, classes and teaching and online things to teach people about animals and um, and so Zeus lives there and he's sort of an he is an ambassador and he's so gorgeous and I just was totally besotted with him so hopefully you can see that but his eyes, his eyes are like the cosmos. They're, they're like mini universes. They're so beautiful. And he's a teeny little owl. He's, he's like, he's sort of the same size as a little owl. Um, so uh, he's probably about, I don't know, about that big, about there. So, so he's quite compact, but he's like this powerhouse. I mean, the energy from him, as you know, is, is just amazing. So, so if you uh, are drawn to Zeus, then definitely have a look. Uh, on Instagram just look up Zeus I think it just says Zeus the owl and you'll find him and all his posts and the website that they have uh, you'll see lots of updates on on what he's been up to and and uh, who he's been sharing his wisdom with but yeah so I I just was instinctively called to to work with him and that was just a joy um it was so wonderful um, and I've had I've sold some of the prints, I haven't sold the original yet, but um, but again, with each of the print sales, I, I send 10% uh, of the sale price to the Wildlife Centre um, to help with his care, because obviously he's doing such a great service. Uh, you know, the ideal would be he would be wild and, and he'd have to be sighted to be wild. Um, but his purpose here in this lifetime is obviously sharing his amazing wisdom with people that that come to visit him and people like me that find him, you know, yeah. go, oh, look at him. So, so yeah, so um, so that was a, a really uh, lovely non coincidence, as I call them. They they tend to just show up when when they're ready and, and demand <laughs> the time that I go for oh, incidents or a synchronicity. Yeah, which again, it's so lovely because 
it's not about it's not about me it's not about you know what do I need to do and how do I need to do this and um, I still get nervous uh, wondering if I can do justice to the animals because they're so incredibly beautiful um, but as long as I can you know keep connecting back to the animal which is you know most important they they literally just guide guide me along so um, and I think if you weren't doing justice they wouldn't come well, yeah, I hope so. I mean, a lot of the feedback I get from from my followers um, is that they feel they can connect in with the animal, and they feel that they're at the animal's essence is there, and and I think that you know that reflects in how I feel and my experience of when I'm creating them is that they do visit, and and I'm simply you know the the hands and the you know the holder of the brush and the pencils and I allow it to come through so so I love you know there's nothing that makes me happier when people say oh you know I sat looking looking at them and, and I had this amazing message come through and it was so beautiful because that for me is you know me being able to help just sort of spread that word from the animals and um, that makes me feel really good you know in in these times to be able to help in whatever way and I think um, when when you create something and obviously co-creating it as well whatever mm -hmm. energy you create it with goes with that thing I mean even if you look at the bottle of naked juices they say made with love and yeah. I think that's very much the case that yeah. when you put basically all of your selfness and, and the real who you really are into yeah. that co-creation doing yeah. it with reverence with respect with love with gratitude all of those energies that you're putting in all of those really high vibrations yeah and because as well i think with you focusing on the eye the eye being the window to the soul then mm. people really can connect by looking yeah. at the image that you've created yeah i think so and and you know it's such a natural thing because you know um, I work with a group of artists online. We have like a support group, and um, and there's quite a few artists that um, they create pieces, but they don't really feel that connected to it. And I just feel so lucky that I don't have to. I don't have to even think about it because it's such a natural love, um, and I'm so. It's like I'm in awe every time that you know, like the piece I'm doing today in your in your name, my Robin that I showed you earlier. Um, I'm just like reveling in in every little piece of it because it's just like they come into life in front of me, and it's all it's it's pretty close to actually you know having an encounter in the wild with an animal for real, you know, in that physicality. So. And I so think that it, that it is in your art because you're bringing that, that is part of the self that you put into it. And you have yeah. such joy and gratitude and reverence and respect and awe for nature. So that goes mm. into the piece. And I'm actually speaking at a summit next month about nature and how that brings us that deep gratitude, that balance, that joy, that well-being, that just yeah. awe exactly well and I think you know when you when you enter into that space where you feel uh love for another even though they are part of us it reflects back to you as well so it that's why I think nature and animals make so many people feel so good um I think there are people that have become disconnected and that for me, that's there's nothing sadder than that, and I just pray that they do reconnect, because when we reconnect to nature, because we are part of nature, um, we then get a sense of that unconditional love that is always there. You know, in the morning when you wake up, you know the planets here, Mother Earth's here, and all of the amazing creations are here. And we get to experience that. And it's only for a short time period, really, in the big scheme of life, you know, billions and billions and trillions of years, probably, that life's existed in one form or another. Um, we're only here for a brief time. And I just think when when you can remember that through that connection, it's, you know, it's it's uh, it's mutually beneficial because, I you know, you know this as soon as we encounter 
that grounded feeling out in nature and we see a, a robin or a blackbird or a fox it it lifts you up and makes you feel better and and that's i'm sure that that's because in that sighting and that feeling we reconnect to that part in ourselves and it's like oh that's who i am i'm not all this mass of thinking and busy and conditions and limiting beliefs and wounds and I'm not really that they're, they're there and and I'm here to work through them and hopefully let them go but that's not who I really am whereas this is who I really am and and that's all those positive things light expansive you know miraculous and all those things and and I just think especially I think COVID-19 as a teacher um that's been one of the big lessons I think for for me certainly um to have permission in the crazy human world we live in to spend more time quiet in nature and having the planes out of the sky and the traffic noise I mean we don't get much here but you know a lot less to be able to see nature responding and to feel how that feels to be reconnecting to that on a deeper and deeper levels is is priceless you know it really is and i think that's part of again covid-19 horrid and and lots of unpleasantness around it but equally opening a doorway for us to to reconnect to peace and nature and our own nature who we really are not what we think we are or what we've been told we are or any of that silliness so Absolutely. yeah I, I think it's like you were saying earlier as well with animals there's no judgment it's just you are who you are and that's fine you know yeah just, just yourself and when we go out into nature it helps us to lose all the masks that we think we need in like you were saying when you were working in the corporate world when we're yeah. in our busyness and our everyday lives the masks that we start to develop or we've been given when we're out yeah. in nature we don't need those and it is yeah. that reconnection with it's safe to be me and I feel this non-conditional unconditional love non-judgmental acceptance and yeah. then like you say it gets reflected back and then it's just I feel I, I lose myself to find my real self I mm. lose my identity what I've been yeah. created but find who I really am yeah, even if exactly. it's only for that split moment yeah. That then takes us on to your collection, which is all about wild and British wild. Oh, yes. Share a little yeah. bit about that, if you would. Yeah, so um, again, my memory is hilarious. I always say it's evolution. <laughs> I'm evolving. I can't remember what I did last week. or, But yes, I think mm, probably about eight months ago, I think, I, um, I was getting the feeling that um, I wanted to i think it was it was driven out of a desire to again want to give back and um i live in the uk uh and so the the, the wildlife that here is the wildlife that i've grown up with uh and i've been lucky enough to see animals all over the world but i'm you know my home's in the uk and and i feel very passionately that um you know we're not taking care of nature and wildlife um, and Britain's really really suffering you know from a loss of wildlife habitat and you know nature's struggling and and um, and that makes me really sad you know and I wanted to wanted to do something to help so the idea sort of formulated to to do a collection a very simple collection of um, all the animals in the UK that wanted to to be a part of it because again I'm just following that same process so they just turn up and say me next me next it won't be the words but you'll you know I get the feeling that they're coming up and saying it's time for my vibration please thank you very much um, and so I started um, just paying attention to which animals were coming in um, and I've kept them all uh so they're the same the same sort of style let me see i can share you the one that i'm currently in process with that you had a glimpse of earlier didn't you robin and it is in fact can you see that oh yes it's a robin so yeah so 
So there are, yes, he, I saw this uh, image in my mind of a robin singing his heart out. Um, and I just thought, you know what, it's just something that lifts people's spirits when you hear a beautiful bird song. And you can, if you see them and you see how joyful they are and they're voicing who they are and they're really sharing themselves with the world. And, you know, and it always sounds and feel so joyous so I just thought that was a really perfect com you know composition for the robin and and we all love I think everybody loves the robin red breast don't they with this beautiful orangey russety red chest and they're such um proud and uh brave uh beings very territorial and they strut their stuff and they get all fluffy and they're just a beautiful bird so so um he's my latest uh, in the collection is the tenth piece that I've done, um, and they're all on. So they're just uh, on cartridge, white cartridge paper, because I wanted the focus to be on them, and not to have too many distractions. Um, and so I've I've kept with that. So um, uh, so yes, I've done ten so far. I've got a huge list of other animals that have already told me that they're waiting. And so that I'm just allowing that list to to grow and then at the time when I'm ready to do the next one I just wait and see who comes so, um, forward first yeah so Robin was very clear uh, was it yesterday it was like, no day before yesterday uh, the Robin in the garden we have uh, several Robins that come in and he was just strutting his stuff and I went out for a walk and there was a Robin in the in the hedgerow and he just sat singing at me and I thought <laughs> well it. it'll be you then so uh so yeah so I'm, I'm working with um uh, these beautiful pencils uh they're called polychromos pencils and they're just amazing they're um they're unlike any other colored pencil i've ever worked with um because they're just so beautiful and soft and they blend so well and um it's amazing how you can merge them and get all these amazing colors and um so they're very simple white background and then uh, my my um, exhibition that I'm going to be doing next May uh, up in North Yorkshire uh, in a lovely little town called Moulton. Uh, I will have them, all the originals uh, on display for the month of May um, and it'll just have a, a simple off-white mount and then a black, a very simple black frame and, and it felt like that was just a way of showcasing who they are um, and telling a little bit of their story underneath each piece. So, um, That's so, so wonderful. yeah, that, that, like you say, that. Robin energy for right now. You were saying earlier about showing up, how the animal shows up, and how the robin is such a confident little bird and yeah. such a cheerful little bird, which is perfect as we go into the shorter days, we approach the festive season, and also after the year that we've had, it's nice to have that uplift and yeah. that cheerful, it's such a cheerful yeah. picture. So yeah. to have that as well, I think, is so spot on for right yeah. now. Yeah, and I think they do, you know, their messages as they come through, you know, it's a little bit like, um, so I tend to uh, follow a couple of astrologers, as you know, Robin, and uh, they sort of give you the prediction of what the different various constellational things are happening in astrology. Um, and I'll often read them for the, you know, for the time, the immediate time period and think well I've been noticing that I've been feeling like that and so it's almost like there's a bit of a time lapse and you think isn't that amazing that you get a message confirming that what you've been feeling yeah. is actually written in the stars above you and it's a little bit the same it's very similar with the animals they show up with a message that often for me anyway it sort of comes after I've had the experience and it's almost like a confirmation of yeah. This is this is what you've been working on, and here I here's this energy in me as an animal and a being to confirm that what you're noticing in your intuitive senses is is right, and you are on the right sort of path. And and I think you know in today's uh, strange times, I think we're being invited to get more to become more trusting of our intuition. Yeah. And to really know that when we listen from that stillness and we and we 
ask for help we will receive information that will help us in that in that comforting way that I mentioned earlier and and it's just you know it never ceases to just blow me away you know because it's like remarkable isn't it how we don't know how that happens but it's magic isn't it you know it's the hologram it's the connection I guess and I I, I love that what you're saying that it, you're feeling something when you tune in to feel it, when you tune in and really listen to your body and you have this intuition, you have these senses of something mm. and that's kind of an inkling of what that might be. And mm. then you get that affirmation, you get the confirmation by seeing the animal or whatever way it works for you, mm. which is kind of like, yes, keep going. You're right. You're yeah. on the right track. But again, you need to be open to that, to seeing it. Because you might see a robin and think, oh, that's very nice and move on rather <laughs> yeah. than, there's a robin what is the message of robin and then you know if you need to look that up or whatever do a bit of research and then, but that's exactly it yeah. you know you maybe don't get that confirmation until you really think or you listen or you research or whatever it is but if you're open to all of that yeah then the yeah. nature and the world and the universe is sending us all of these messages from inside from outside and they come together Exactly. And I think, like you were saying about the teaching of COVID, it is be still, yeah. listen, trust yourself. We're getting yeah. conflicting messages all of the time. We need yeah. to go within and do, you know, stand in our own truth, be our own selves. Yeah. And do that with grace and gentleness. Yeah. You know, not, not forcing it on anybody else, but just sticking in our own truth, truth for us. Yeah. And, you know, I think if, even if you don't necessarily believe it, if you can try it on as a belief mm. and wonder, you know, if the world around you is just showing you reflections of yourself and you become curious about what that might mean and you then start just searching and asking for clarity around, well, why is it that my car's got a slow puncture, you know, which I've just had... Why is my car got a slow puncture? Well, yeah, in the past, oh, it's got a slow puncture. That's annoying. I'll go and get it fixed, you know. But now I'm thinking, well, what's that showing? Well, it's showing that the pressure or the energy, as I would see it, in the tyre slowly, slowly going down. And if you don't pay attention to it, you're going to be stuck somewhere and you're not going to be able to drive where you want to go. Um, and I, I just reflect that into myself and think, well, is, am I looking after myself? have I been doing a bit too much and not really balancing and you know and, and I've had that big journey of learning that and I think it's so important for me because I'm still I feel like I'm still repairing myself um from that and so I pay attention but you know it's not you don't have to become obsessive about it and worry about everything but or even have to notice everything it's just you won't, no. curiosity I love that word yeah, just being playful with it and yes. wondering what it might be reflecting back. If it is a mirror, what it might be reflecting back and then having fun understanding what that might mean. Because, you know, I communicate with the animals a lot and I can receive a lot, but sometimes I won't be able to get anything and I'll be really blocked. And so I'll, I'll go online and put in oh, this animal. What does it mean? What's the spiritual meaning of this animal or... Uh, what's ancient beliefs about badgers or whatever, whoever it might be. And then something will come where I'll go, oh, yeah, that sounds a bit like what might be happening at the moment. And, and just add it into the observation, because I think the more you can just sort of observe and say, well, look, I'm having this, this experience in this funny human body, um and some things are a bit awry at the moment or you know things are going well but I've got this nagging feeling that maybe something horrible is going to happen whatever it is that if you become light with it and you follow that intuitive guidance you will be amazed at what you what you get back um and in un unexpected ways so I've even had a question pop into mind what does that mean and I haven't even searched somebody having a conversation next to me and they'll be talking about it and I'll be like oh that's what I needed to hear you know or things as well because I would think about oh do you remember that program I used to watch I wonder what blah 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 and then it'll be on telly 
Exactly. Well, that was from 10 years ago. How do I suddenly think about it? And then it's on telly. But I love right. that idea. And your workshops weren't workshops, were they? They were play shops. Yeah. I love curiosity, lightness, play. We take yeah. things far too seriously, don't we? And I think mm -hmm. it's it's also not necessarily about, well, that's a bit woo-woo. Is it real? It doesn't matter. It's whatever you, however you take it, just take it lightly. And if it resonates for you, just be curious. Why is that resonating? What yeah. is that showing me? What's it teaching me? What can I learn from it? You know, whether yeah. my slow puncture is actually a message from the universe or not, doesn't matter. If it makes me think self-care would be good. Exactly. Self-care is good. <laughs> yeah. It's how yeah. we take it and what we choose to do with it. Yeah. And also, I, you know, if I if I have something come through and I think, oh, you know, maybe I'm just reading too much into this or I'm trying to, I'm trying in my human way to make this fit. Yeah. And I just ask for something else to come I just before I go to sleep okay if this is if this is what it I think it is then just let me know tomorrow or whenever and then just be aware and again the thing with this is why why it's so important to be calm and present as much as we can and help ourselves to do that is that you'll notice things much more easily than when you're in your head and busy 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 because if you're too distracted in the past or worrying about the future or too distracted with social media or whatever you'll tend to miss a lot of stuff so so it gets easier when you're more open to that sort of you know quiet space and and I think you know again back to my art I think I'm so lucky now because the, the working with Linda Tucker in the lines was amazing and I loved every minute of it but it was such a busy job and there was always so much to do and so many people and so much noise and then coming and into travel that, too. yeah a lot of travel and uh, just a lot of online work which again I think you have to try and balance that which is harder in Covid times but um, so doing my art I just get so I try and tend to spend my mornings doing my art um, and I just lock myself in my lovely little art studio put some music on always put always put elbow on there's one for you I have elbows I can't remember which album it is but it's my favorite album and I play it every day for my art it's like takes me into a whole new world and Dave's like don't you get bored of listening to the same music no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's just I think it's something to do with Guy Garvey I don't know if you know Elbow at all but um oh, have a look at Elbow I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that yeah the lead singer Guy Garvey he's like he's like a big angel in a human body he's like got this angelic voice and his energy is very evolved and his music I mean it's quite rocky the music some of it but it's beautiful lyrics and I just something in that connects with me coming into my quiet space and you know whatever that is for you you know finding that but I just feel like in this sort of three four hours in the morning I'm just in this beautiful space and I also go out morning and afternoon for a walk as well um, and that really gives me this this ability to keep tuned into my intuitive side and makes life a lot easier it really does yeah, it really and because the more the more that we do it, the more that that develops like any sense or any muscle. Yeah. But then yeah. the more that, oh, it's OK. I know that it's OK because it's been OK. And nature or whatever keeps showing up and my trust and my openness keep getting what I need. So yeah. I can just keep yeah. doing it. Exactly. Exactly. And um. Uh, and, you know, I suppose not having too many expectations about how things will turn up or what exactly will happen, but but holding. I think you mentioned earlier about focusing. And I think if you focus on what you want, but not with an attachment to how that's going to happen, you know, even it's if it's... Balance, easy. Isn't it? Yeah, and... and yeah, and we're, and we're naturally conditioned to want to plan and make and force and act and, you know, and and, and that really doesn't necessarily work. Uh, when it's in alignment and you do an action and it's flowing and easy, that's great. But when you're trying to make something, it gets a bit messy, doesn't it? So, um, but, uh, 
but yeah so so sort of trying to stay focused on what you want and then allowing nature to support you through that is for me anyway it's it's the easiest way and it's you don't you don't just do it naturally you have to keep reminding yourself don't you <laughs> it's a Forget practice it. yeah it's a yeah. practice and also what I've learned for me is being grateful for it knowing that it's already a reality because yeah. you know it, every moment is now we're in this hologram so somewhere that is a reality and if we can yeah. hold that wow isn't it amazing to have that just the gratitude yeah. and the joy then it'll yeah. come more easily because we're in that right vibration so law yeah. of attraction will draw it in exactly and you know as souls in human bodies it's not it's simple but it's not always easy <laughs> yeah the soul bit finds it really simple but the human bit tends to try and try too much we yeah. do too much of the doing rather than the being or the human human bit. exactly exactly and i think the more you know i definitely you know encourage greater creativity whatever that looks like for you as well um Obviously, I'm loving my art and creating in that way. But, you know, it might not look like art to you, but it might look like singing or dancing or music or whatever it is. I think or building engines because yeah, yeah lots whatever. Of people are creative in lots of different ways. Yeah, there's so many different ways of being creative. And yet, you know, with everything that's happening and all the uncertainty and the turbulence, I think getting into that creative space is such a powerful thing and, a, and you know, it's a, almost an essential, um, and, you know, and it's interesting how a lot of the arty things have been left, you know, and left to sort of almost deteriorate because I just think, well, actually we need more creativity in the world, don't we, to allow people to get into that space where they can, listen to their intuition and be guided so that they can more easily create good in the world for themselves and others and um, how art supports expression and we can yeah. find out as well i think through art in all of its various different forms who we are which which form resonates for me which helps me to express more of who i am inside Yes, that, yes. That's, that's the value of art for just, you know, the general. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, um, so that's quite a bit about my art, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lots of them. Early, we, earlier, we could talk forever, but just because yeah. we are kind of, you know, we're going to lose people and they're, they won't have time to watch all of this maybe, but... I wanted to maybe draw things to a close with mm, your beautiful, what? beautiful Christmas card, if we may. Oh, yes, yeah, let me just uh, grab hold of an actual one. So he, he's actually part of uh, my uh, Wild Britain collection. Um, again, hopefully, get him to it. Ooh. Yes, we can oh, see okay. him. So we have a partridge in a pear tree. Uh, which you would very rarely see in reality. <laughs> Partridges tend to prefer to be on the ground or in the air rather than in trees. But um, yeah, so not about, thin branches. Yeah, I was, I was, I was called by the partridges, um, and they are red-legged partridges, um, which apparently are not indigenous to the UK. But I think they probably were here at one point. But they apparently were brought here uh, quite a few centuries ago uh, from France. Um, but they're here now, um, and we get quite a lot of them around here. Um, and I had a very brave little chap run up to me. I mean, he must have been so brave. And literally, I could hear him say, draw us, draw us. <laughs> and then he ran away. <laughs> Bless him. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to hurt you. You're so beautiful. And then I had five of them turn up in the garden, um, literally right by the back door the following day so close and they couldn't see me through the, the glass in the door and I just stood and I took some photos of them and they're just so beautiful such they're so compact and they're mm. so 
they really love each other and they're a little family group and the male looks after his ladies and they all look around him and look after him and and they're so food oriented they get all excited when there's food and they're helping each other and and I just thought well I've been asking for a, a, a Christmas card idea for a new card and of course the partridge turned up I think it was about September so it gave me plenty of time to to do that uh, and I thought well what goes with the partridge but the pears so um so I, I decided to put the two together which um, which worked really well so um so yeah so I created the card uh and just thought well again for covid christmas this year whatever that's going to look like i thought cards that we send to each other are probably going to be even more important than normal i think a lot of people have sort of got out of the habit of sending cards a lot of the time but i think this year if we can't visit loved ones and we've not been able to see them as we normally would you know we can we can write a lovely letter or put a message into a card and i think it would really you know really make a difference um so that was sort of where I was coming from. So I thought, well, I'm, I want to make them as beautiful as possible. And so I put them onto really lovely, heavy card, as you as you know. Yeah, Robin. they are really beautiful. And all wrapped as plastic free and everything. They are fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I don't add to the plastic problem on the planet. Um, and so I, I just uh, use card envelope, uh, card backed envelope to post them out. So, um, so yeah, so they're, they're still available. Um, and uh, I guess we can share information if anybody's interested in those um, underneath in the, or in the link. Uh, so you can find how to order them, but it's very simple. So, so yeah, so in that piece, I've got a, an A4 piece for my collection as well. So, uh, so he'll be part of the, the whole collection as well which is which is lovely absolutely fabulous so thank you so much jules i wish we could stay here forever and just chat through the night but oh maybe do it again yes absolutely i was just going to say maybe you can come back yeah. for another maybe yeah. look at your collection because like you're saying you're uh, exhibiting in may in yeah, yeah so that's right maybe we could uh do something around that we can, we can have a chat and see what else yeah. we can do yeah well, there's but, so many things so many things we could talk about isn't there? <laughs> you know, so too too many but thank oh. you so much for being here today giving up of your time and sharing some of your beautiful pieces it's been a joy thank you oh thank you thank you very much for inviting me and uh and thank you to everybody listening in because uh it's lovely to connect and, and do let us know uh, your your thoughts or if you've got any questions or anything because I know we were we were going to do this live but uh, the technology said no yeah. so we adapted so if you have got any questions or you know you've been seeing animals um, and you want to know meanings uh, then do you know pop some questions down and, and uh, we'll come back to you and and uh, and fill in any information share any information we can with you Absolutely. Anything that you wanted to share around nature or animals, anything that our discussion has maybe raised for you, then please do uh, post below and we will definitely reply. So going to say goodbye for now. Thank you very much for watching and hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye for now. Thanks, everybody. Bye.